Good evening. This is my podcast. This is the story of my life, the story that makes my life. This is Dick Starr, and I'm actually in studio with Conservative Joe, who was there that night, the fateful night, Joe, when we were held at gunpoint. Joe, how do you feel right now? It's difficult for me to relive the past, but I'm going to try my best. Well, we're going to relive that past briefly, Joe. Um, you know, we were at a party. We, we bleed left like we were supposed to. We drove down the hill, saw my aunt's house. We're like, hey, let's get some food. I know Auntie Jen's awake, Joe. It's only, you know, 2 in the morning. You know, normal people are awake at that hour. And uh, we parked the car, and all of a sudden we hear this roaring engine behind us, flashing lights. Well, actually, it was just bright white lights. And this man comes out of this F-150 truck, pointing a gun at it, my face. Joe, when you saw it, how did you feel? Honestly, I was completely scared. I had no idea what was going on, and I thought that I thought that my life was going to end that night. I started to cry a little bit. My eyes weren't the only thing wet. I think my pants were, too, when I got up. <laughs> and uh, I believe it. It was that kind of a night, Joe. This man started yelling obscenities at me, telling me that I was going to go to jail because I had hit his car. He had his gun pointed at my face, told me to get on the ground, get on the F ground, and told me to take the keys out of ignition, told you to get out of the car. You're all against the wall crying. In tears, I'm against the wall wondering if this is going to be the end for me. This guy has the gun. Literally, the barrel, I could feel it on my neck almost. It was almost that close. And he's just shouting at us, cussing at us, saying that, you know, hit and run. If we hit his truck, which didn't happen, and then he ends up saying that I am a police officer about 10 minutes into this whole thing. Yeah, unbelievable. I was completely amazed that he did that. And honestly, when he was saying that you were going to go to jail, I would have been thrilled probably because I was so afraid that I was going to die. Yeah, and, you know, jail looked like a good option to me, but nothing happened, obviously, because we were innocent. The police showed up, checked out my car. Obviously, no white paint on a black car. The guy couldn't check that himself for some reason. And what ended up happening to this man? Well, he came up to us with the gun still in his pocket, you know, in his off-duty white khaki pants or white shirt khaki pants, bald head, tells us that he made a mistake. Joe, what was going through your mind at that second? You know, was it relief? Were you embarrassed of the wetness you had in your pants? What was it? I think it was all of those. I was embarrassed about it. I was relieved that I wasn't going to die, and I was kind of confused at why this man was so dumb to pull a gun on us for no reason. Yeah, you know, two 17-year-old kids in the alleyway, yeah, we look suspicious to you, but that was my aunt's house. My aunt came out, gave him a little piece of her mind after we did, and this man ended up getting six months unpaid suspension from the blank, blank city sheriff's office or station, which he duly deserved for doing what he did, Joe, but, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, we learned our lesson, you know. Someone pulls a gun on you, don't lose your composure. And that's what I think I took away from this experience, you know. Life, life-threatening life experience, to be honest. I also believe that, and I also think that people should always tell their family members how much they love them because you never know when a mix-up could happen. And this mix-up I will never forget. That's all I have time, all the time I have for this podcast. Thank you, Dr. Murray, for giving me the opportunity. And class, I look forward to hearing your story. Thank you.